Hello and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of the legendary architect Mies van der Rohe. Today we are going to look at a plugin for Grasshopper called Paneling Tools. We can do a lot of really neat stuff with paneling tools and Right here on my screen you see this tessellated diamond grid with this tapered form with the with the opening at the top and uh, we're gonna be this is where we will arrive at the end it's kind of like you know when the old baking shows now I'm gonna now I'm gonna date myself uh, if you've ever watched Julia Childs if not you can search it on YouTube but you know, she would start baking and then pull out the finished cake at the end. Well, this is the finished cake. This is where we're going to end up. So a couple of things I want to look at um, before we jump into it that we can actually do with this. I'm going to go ahead and hide the bake geometry in Rhino. So here's, here's some grasshopper geometry. And I'm going to unhide a, a surface that is in this file. So here it is on that layer. Okay, so we see this surface, and there's a parametric connection to this surface and what's happening in Grasshopper. Meaning, if I take one of these control points and I start to lower down, and what you'll see when I release is that that um, form, that tapered form, is updating. So it's it's using it kind of as as a clipping plane. If I pick it way up, you'll see it'll meet the top of it. Um, so that's one pretty cool way that we can set up a parametric relationship between uh, a surface and some geometry in Grasshopper. Okay, let's let's hide that for now. Okay, so a couple things before we before we jump in. If you haven't subscribed to my channel please go ahead and subscribe and when you hit the subscribe button go ahead and hit the little bell next to it I'm trying to get 5,000 subscribers and I think that would be really cool I'm pretty close to 5,000 subscribers and if you haven't been here before I have a lot of videos on a lot of topics and I keep making these uh, much more recently than I have in the past and it's it's been a lot of fun doing that so go ahead and subscribe and help me get to my 5,000 subscribers also, go ahead and follow me on Instagram to see what I'm up to. It's Alfonso, which is my first name, Alfonso underscore my last name, Peluso. Been up to a lot of really cool stuff at IIT where I teach. Uh, my students are using Grasshopper and they're using Rhino and they're using D-Ray and they're using all these, all these cool things. Um, ran a Chicago Marathon not too long ago. So yeah, to see what I'm up to, see what my students are doing, see what kind of architecture I'm looking at, what tutorials are coming out, what I'm thinking about making. So go ahead and connect with me on Instagram and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay, back to paneling tools. So if you search paneling tools grasshopper in Google, you'll come up with a Food for Rhino site where you can download this free plugin for grasshopper. Okay, so let's let's jump into it. So I'm going to go ahead and open my new file here. All right, so in in Rhino, just to show you what I have set up here. So this file, if I go to DOC, if I type in DOC, enter, and I go over to my units, I'm just working in feet at the moment. And my grid, I have it set to a grid line count of 10, minor grid lines every foot, 10, so every major line, so those heavy lines I'm going to have every 10 minor, so every 10 feet you'll see a, a, a large rectangle, and my snap spacing is set to 1 foot. So here we go, so this is just a big 10 foot rectangle, and then a bunch of 1 foot rectangles within it. All right, so I'm going to make, the first thing I'm going to do is make a plain, plain surface. And we'll look at tessellating, doing a quick 
2D, so we're going to look at paneling 2D and morph 2D, so we'll do some 2D tessellations, and then we'll jump on into our 3D. Alright, I'm just going to double click and type in 10, and I'm going to use that to plug into the X and the Y, so there's my, my 10 foot surface there. Okay, now, what paneling tools want you to do is it wants you to create a grid. Now, Paneling Tools is really good with rectangular grids and diamond grids, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. So I'm going up to, so this is the Paneling Tools. These are all the, the, the panels, I call them, for, for Paneling Tools. So if I go to Grid, and I'm going to make a grid by a surface domain number. This is just a, a, a common way, if you're using Grasshopper, you've worked with U and V ISO curves before, so this is a similar approach. So I'll choose surface domain number, and I'm going to plug my plane surface into the surface input. You see by default it has 10 and 10, but just, just so we can see that, I'm going to plug, both, plug this both into the U and the V. So there we go. So I could reduce the amount of points, and I can increase the amount of points. Okay, so we're going to look at uh, tessellating the surface, quick 2D tessellation. So under Panel 2D, I'm going to choose Morph 2D. And Morph 2D, it wants the grid, the grid that we just made, and then it wants some pattern curves. So I'm going to go ahead and make a circle, a two-dimensional circle, and I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. Okay, right away you see it's tessellated. The circle at my origin, that's this one here. Okay, this is the tessellation. Okay, what else, what else can we do with that? Well, we can start to remove some of those tessellations. You see a shift I and a shift J here. So I can double click and I can, I can type in two here and I can plug that into both shift I and shift J. So you see it starts to remove some of those. And you might hear my dog Rita in the background. She's going crazy over something. It's probably a squirrel outside, I'm sure. I don't know how the weather is where you guys are at, but we are in, we're deep in the fall here, but winter has showed its head here in Chicago. We've had some cold days. Today was below freezing. Woke up and there was a little bit of snow on the roofs. Okay, so you see I'm just removing some of these, um, so removing some of these circles. All right, so let's put it back to one, and that panelizes each one. Now, we can have more then one tessellation, so that was a circle. I can add, I'm gonna use a polygon. I'm putting on a polygon here, and by default the polygon has uh, six, six segments, so it's a hexagon, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. Okay, so now you see I'm tessellating both the circle and the hexagon. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to fix the radius on both of these so that they match. So there's a radius of one with a circle. So I'm going to do a couple, couple tricky, not tricky, but you know, just doing some things um, a little bit differently. I just want to show you guys as much as possible. We all know how to make number sliders. Uh, I can extract that parameter. It doesn't, it doesn't, uh, you know, give me a one value, but I can, I can still get the value of that. I can. I can use a panel, and I can go ahead and plug that in, and I'll make my panel really small there. So there's my there's my one that I can uh, I can use that I can use that for my radius. I can plug that into the the radius of my hexagon, and uh, let's let's go ahead and just see that. So I'm selecting that, and then Shift Control I is a selection inverse. Right click in the canvas, preview off. Okay, so I'm just seeing a circle inscribed, uh, or uh, rather a hexagon inscribed in a circle. Okay, so I mentioned it was very good, Paneling Tools was very good at making rectangular tessellations, uh, which is what we're looking at here. Now if I wanted to, to actually tessellate a hexagon, meaning make a hexagonal pattern, Paneling Tools wouldn't be wouldn't be my choice. I would actually just in in um, in Grasshopper, just a default Grasshopper. There's a 2D grid with hexagonal cells. 
So we can uh, let's just take a look at that by itself. So that's a little bit different. You can see, you know, you get the you get the beehive structure. So I just it's worth pointing that out. Okay. All right. Now let's look at how this can be applied to um, a more a freeform surface because we're looking at this as a flat surface and most of the stuff that we're doing in Grasshopper is, is it being applied to a freeform surface. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bake this surface. Okay, let's see that my surface show up. Let's, let's do this again. I'm going to right click over the plane and choose bake. Doesn't doesn't want to show up, probably because it's hidden. I I hope maybe this is a learning opportunity here. All right, so let's see here. I wonder if my my default layer is off. Of course, <laughs> so we got a whole bunch of these baked. Let's uh let's actually bake this. Makes sense that we should bake it on a different layer. Okay. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, there it is. Let's make this view shaded. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and take that, and I'm just going to copy it. I'm just going to move it, actually. So select it, move it over. Okay, so I'm going to make this into um, a freeform surface. And I have a grasshopper tutorial how to make freeform surfaces out of out of uh, plane surfaces uh, to manipulate surface tutorial and it shows you how to do it in grasshopper and at the end of this video you'll see a link to it but uh, just for sake of time here I'm going to do this in Rhino so I'm going to rebuild this surface in Rhino okay just this is one of the last rebuilds I did here it remembers it I'll take that and I'm going to turn on my points using the F10 key. And my gumball, my gumball is on at the bottom of my screen, so I'm going to raise and lower some of these points. So I'm making this freeform surface. A couple more of these. Okay, so there you see that surface. So let's let's tessellate that surface so all we really need to do is bring it into grasshopper and replace what's being plugged here so i'm going to double click and type in surface and i'm going to use a surface container that's going to contain the geometry from rhino i'm going to right click choose set one surface pick that one plug that one in there instead move it over there okay we'll we'll turn it off here and we'll turn it off there. All right, so now you're seeing that same tessellation be being applied to a three-dimensional surface. So when I'm working with my students, I call this a two and a half D tessellation, not a two D tessellation, but two and a half D, which means you're tessellating two D geometry over a three D surface. All right, so now we can move on to the panel three D and the morph 3d so let's let's go ahead and do that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to have a uh, my my flat surface which i i have here somewhere um, so let's see here i don't need this one right now and i'll actually just use i'm being punished because i'm not using good layer organization here <laughs> so you want to use good layer organization all right so um, I want my flat surface it's a it's around here somewhere my flat surface is around here somewhere all right let's see what we got here that's the that's that one all right well I'm gonna bake it again let's make layer four current and probably because I didn't copy it, right? I bet I go back and watch this video, I bet I moved it and I didn't copy it. So I'm going to go ahead and bake that plain surface. 
once more. Okay. All right, so there's my my plane surface, my flat surface. And I'm going to go ahead and bring that into Grasshopper with a surface container. Go ahead and right click, set on surface, choose that. So there we go, that's in Grasshopper. I'm also going to I'm going to make a copy of this one. So I'm going to for this 3D, I'm going to actually use two surfaces. And we'll see that in a little bit. So we're making what you saw at the beginning of the tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and just pick that up. Okay, so there, those are the two surfaces that I need. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead. I'm going to copy and paste this and right click set one surface. Choose that top one. I'm going to take both of those. <laughs> the oh no. Rita, just a scroll. <laughs> Take it easy. All right. Okay. She's not ferocious. She's a she's a good pup. She turned one recently too. All right. So there I have those two surfaces in uh, in Grasshopper now. So just as I did before with the two D, I need to put a grid on each one of these. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, apply my grid. And I'm going to do that again with a surface domain number. Okay, so I'll plug this one in. That's my bottom one. And just so we have a number slider, I'll take this one. And I'll plug it into both of those. Okay. All right, so I need another one of these. Now you can have different UMV values. You guys, you guys can experiment. You can do a lot of experimentation with this where you have different UMV values. Right now I just have the one number slider that's plugged into to all my UMV values. So they all, they're all matching up. And if I raise or lower this, you see that it's changing there. Okay. All right, those are the grids. Now we need the object that we're going to tessellate, that cone object that I showed you guys in the, in the beginning of this tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and make that here in Grasshopper. I'm just going to make it, it's, it's just a rectangle that I copy up and then I taper it in by scaling. So I'm going to make that, just make it one, one by one here. It's one foot by one foot. Now. I'm going to I'm going to uh, you know I want you guys to see this a little bit better. So in in Rhino I'm going to type in point and there's my my point. I'm going to bring that into I'm going to bring that into Grasshopper. Okay? And I'm going to use that as a plane for this rectangle. All right, so there you go. There's that rectangle. Okay, so now I'm going to copy, and move is a copy in Grasshopper, because it makes a copy of it, keeps it, keeps the original, so the original is there. The copy, I'm going to copy that in the Z direction. Okay, so there you see it, copied it up one, one value, it's probably one plugged into the factor. Okay, so now I'm going to scale it. Okay, I'm going to use a scale, so geometry to geometry, and you see it's not quite where I want it to be here because it's it's actually scaling about the origin. So if you, I'm going to use a, I'm going to use a little control knob. These are fun. Okay, put this back to paneling tools. All right, so a little control knob there. Plug that into the factor. All right, so as I so as I go back to one, so it's scaling using the center of the origin of Rhino. So I need it to, to scale by the center of this copied rectangle. So to get the center of the copied rectangle, I'm going to use a capsule called Area. I'm going to plug this in there. That Now you see a center point showed up in Rhino. I'm going to use that centroid as my center. Okay, so now you see this is scaling right where I want it to be. And now I'm just going to create a loft between the base rectangle 
and the copy and scale the rectangle. So I'm going to use a loft. Okay, so the copied one, that's this one. And the scaled one is this one. Let's see what we got here. All right, so <laughs> not the copied one. I need the base one and the scaled one. All right, so I'll do that again. So the base, where's the base? That's the base. So here's the base, and here's the scale. All right, there we go. There's our shape. And I can decide how big or small I want that with the control knob. Okay, hopefully I remember to come back to this control knob toward the end and, and show you how that's still a parameter in the, uh, if I don't, you know, just do it on your own. That, that is something you should always be able to change. All right, so, so that's essentially our, what, we're, what we are tessellating, what, what paneling tools, what is paneling tools calling it? Well, let's see, if I go to panel 3D and we go to morph 3D, it's calling it a pattern object. Okay, let's, let's clean this up here. And move some of this stuff out of the way. Okay. When I make these videos, I'm not always as organized as I should be because I, there's, I'm always conscious of time. Like trying to make these not so long, being, um, I guess, respectful of your time. All right. Go ahead and plug. So, this is the this is the morph 3D right here. It looks for the two grids. Okay, uh, so I'm just going to plug these grids in, and then the pattern object is my loft. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. All right. So we're starting to see something here. All right. Pretty cool. Now let's uh, let's get a better look at it. So I'm going to use my good old custom preview. I'm going to plug that in. Alright. Nice Pepto Bismol default color there. If you want to change the color, you just use a color swatch. Okay, you can always change that through the color swatch. I'm going to leave it. Loving that Pepto Bismol color there. Okay, so there we see it now. It's, it's parametric in a lot of ways. Let's go back to the control knob. So I didn't forget the control knob. Let's see what's going on here. So that's, that's always there for me to, uh, to control that. Then there is somewhere in Rhino is the original surface. And let's see, it looks like the layer's on. I'll try my good old show command. There we go. So there's my, there's my surface. I'm going to use F10 to turn on the points. Um, before I do that, I guess, you know, one thing I didn't look at before is, you know, I can simply raise or lower this, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to affect it. At some point, my computer fan is probably going to kick on high here. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe once I render it. Okay, so there we go. That's, you see how that's updating. So it's the same stuff that I showed you at the beginning. I can select individual points here. I gotta turn on F10 to, to get to get those points, so I can, you know, raise that way up, and you see that it's gonna line up with it. Or I can bring this way down. Where's a point? Where's a point? Bring that way down. It's gonna bring that down. All right. Let's. Uh, best thing to do is do the good old select it, Shift Control I right click and preview off all right there it is now i did want to show one more thing because that's the rectangular grid and the one i showed you at the beginning was a diamond grid all right let's check this out let's do this now i will say one thing sometimes these grids like if your if your shape was upside down the cone but it ended up being upside down you could just flip these grid wires this one could go down to grid two and this one could go up to grid one so you can always do that all right uh the, this grid utility that i am looking for all right grid utility is a convert to diamond all right so we'll need we're going to need two of these 
All right, so we'll just be converting to a diamond grid, converting to a diamond grid, plugging that one in. Oh, now that's pretty cool. You never know what you're gonna do. You never know what you're gonna get here. <laughs> that's that's fun. I'm sure some of you guys will use that. Uh, and there's there's my diamond grid. Oh, that's cool. Let's just try it the other way since that looks so fun. Ah, uh, there you go. Lots of fun there. Okay, so there we go. There's our there's our diamond grid, which is what I showed you at the beginning. All right, so that that's all I wanted to cover. Um, hope to connect with you guys on YouTube and Instagram. Leave me some comments. What did you like? What didn't you like? What do you want to see in the future videos? Now, some of you are going to say, yeah, more paneling tools because this was this is labeled part one. Uh, I don't know. Should I do a part two, part three? Uh, you know, I don't know. You let me know what you, what you want. And I appreciate your comments. I've gotten a lot of good comments recently. Uh, I, I like our little online community. Let's let's shoot for 5,000 followers. I hope we can we can get that pretty soon. All right, I will see you all next time.